and history says you must start up front normally to win this race, although we saw Colton Herta win it a couple of years ago from 14. Well, and his team owner, Michael Andretti, way back in 2002, came from last on the grid to win here at Long Beach. But I think when you think of uh, Herta, Andretti, and the big names that have won here, on the streets of the beach that's what it's all about the history of this place is what makes it so special you're talking of course about andretti unser paul tracy will power castro neves and james hinchcliffe they've all gotten it done here james he said it's so peaky right at the rev range where they were and that's a fixable situation either with electronic reprogramming as Blumquist. Blumquist. I was about to say Rosequist. Blumquist getting all kinds of sideways, but that's something that can be addressed whether you're a Honda or a Chevy driver. You can get with your engine tech after the session, maybe even with your engineer, and, and choose a different gearing ratio to try to address that. Big left front lockup into the hairpin from Rosenquist. There's the timing line. What will that do for him? P1. That'll get it done. Almost a second clear of Will Power's time. Now Herta jumps up two tenths down, and it's uh, it's it's these banker laps are so important. You see that left front lockup you talked about there, Townsend. It's so easy to overslow the car in this hairpin, and the same time, it's so easy to overshoot it. P2 for power. He's in right now. Not a lot of green behind him, so looking comfortable. It's Dixon that's really trying to fight his way out of Q1. Here he is through the never-ending turn 10. One corner to go. He's tracking well, but on the bubble, can he get it done? His gonna... teammate Polo is in the danger area, and Dixon will knock out Polo for the moment. But Polo's quicker on that lap. He bumps himself in and bumps Rossi back. Ray Hall sitting there in six. Four more cars on track. Rossi is going to be the last to take the checkers. He got one flyer in the bag. If he makes it out of the hairpin, he gets a little wide at the apex. Now he can take everything he learned on that first lap Whoa. and push harder. Percher into the top six with a 1080. It's going to take a lot more than that. But he can find time in turn one. Look what happened here in eight. This is on the lap he just did. So, so close to the wall here. Do we get a little contact? Just, just a little bit. <laughs> Petit tap. No, it was, it was honestly though, he's doing a great job. You can see it looks like, if anything, the low speed corners may be where he's sacrificing a little bit of rolling speed on these alternate tires. Armstrong right here, he's treading to first place up, as is Grosjean, who's just behind him on the charts, as is Newgard, as is Canapino. So many drivers right now on that first flyer on the alternates. Where does Armstrong tip the line over at a 106.6? Great lap. 78 of Augie Canapino. Where's that entrance to turn eight or the overshoot in turn eight? So the last to take the checkers is going to be Kiffin Simpson, and he is not going to go better. So we're done here for group two. So Pato Award is not going to advance. Grosjean was flirting with the top, made the Firestone fast six at St. Pete. He does not advance. Graham Ray. Oh, boy. He really carried a ton of entry speed there into turn four. I thought he was going to run out of road at the exit. Tires just aren't there, he's saying. Again, this is probably the same set that you would have run for your banker laps in Q1. So they're a little worn, but they are a little worn as well. Yeah, but just be careful. You don't need to turn the, the banker lap into a banger lap as Kirkwood goes to a 6-6 six, six in pits, Dylan. A little bit wide of the second apex, but it should still be good enough to put him in. Rosenquist to P5. We saw Herta safely move up a bit and hit pit lane. So left on the track, Polo is crossing the line in a moment, but he's safe and he's already backed How off. How about Scott Dixon? Lundgaard, Lundgaard also only a hundredth of a second from transferring. He's still got three corners to go, so Lundgaard could bump himself in. Where's Dixon? Half he needs a, a big hairpin. He sends it, slides the front end. Is it enough? It's gonna be close. No. no, cannot get it done. Lundgaard's bleeding time in that last section. Doesn't get it done across the line. Hello, fastest, and the sole Ganassi driver to make it in. Scott McLaughlin, the big loser there from Team Penske. We were expecting all three of them to be competitive. He is less than a hundredth of a second off provisional pole at the moment. Now we see Joseph Newgard. And he's trending to the top halfway through the lap. As is Rosenquist, as is Herta, as is Erickson. Everybody out there except Alex Below. Oh, never mind. Alex Below too is now trending all the way up there. Look at how tight it is. Nobody more than a tenth or so 
above or below. And guys, for the first time today, there is sunshine through turn six and eight starting to pop out. So that track temp gonna jump quickly. This might have come at just the right time for Joseph Newgard to put it on pole. I mean, visually it looks so different once that sun comes out and that that pavement, like you say, Townsend, that's just going to absorb that sunlight, really start to heat up here in the dying seconds. But look at Rosenquist, Newgarden out of the hairpin. He's up three tenths, he goes to the top. By almost three tenths, and he's got another lap. Everyone is going to get another lap other than maybe Alex Pelot. Erickson comes in, look at Rosenquist right now. How big would it be for Rosenquist to be on pole at Long Beach? Rosenquist is done, and he's to the top. Felix Rosenquist. They're currently P1. We'll see what happens here. Herta only a couple hundreds behind, power a tenth or so, and really I think is going to come down to the driver, the 26. He's just in turn one right now. Here's Joseph Newgarden, almost two tenths down, but clawed some time back. He know. did. He got about a tenth out of that corner. Oh. Newgarden using it all. Little clip of the wall, but definitely not lifting off the throttle. He can see on his dashboard, he's trending. Oh, but he's, he's lost some momentum now. That tap has definitely cost him a little bit of time. He's bleeding off the wrong way, but it's power now. Power, just 1,500 back. Newgarden out of the corner, takes the checkered flag. Now Will Powers finding green. The 12 Verizon driver rolls through turn nine. Three corners to go, the long turn 10. Now this is it. He has not won a rotor street course pole since he set the record at Laguna Seca two years ago. Does power do it? No! Four thousandths of a second is the difference. Great run there, great Felix run, Rosenquist appears to have pulled it off. Awesome stuff. Head to head with the best in the business over one lap and Rosenquist puts the Meyer Shank team on pole position. And the New location continues to provide dividends. The new experience, Felix Rosenquist in 2024 has qualified second and first. He was in a quieter supporting role at Chip Ganassi Racing and then at Aero McLaren with Pato Award. But Mike Shank and Jim Meyer brought in Rosenquist and said, we want to build this program around you. They trusted him and he has delivered in 2024. And by the way, he finished 2023 strong. It's not been that long since Rosenquist won a pole. It was the season finale at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. Pole number six for Felix Rosenquist as the momentum continues for the Meyer Shank racing driver. This is their first pole. This is a team that's won the Indy 500, but it's their first IndyCar pole after qualifying second four different times, and Felix Rosenquist does it. Gotta love that. The Fro Show at the front, further back, row five, couple of young hustlers, and how about McLaughlin and Rahal? I think those two rows, actually, you go row seven, James, a lot of action's gonna happen on the start here. A lot of muscle, Tom Blumquist there. He was the highest rookie. You see Linus Blumquist, the other rookies, filing in. There's Teo Porcher outside of row 11 and bringing up the back of the field. A couple rookies there with Kevin Simpson and the young Nolan Siegel for Dale Coyne. Hi folks, Lee Diffie from NBC Sports here. If you truly enjoyed what you just watched, you can get more news, interviews and highlights by subscribing to the Motorsports on NBC YouTube page. You can get it all, so go for it.